So, eight unknown chargers here at Fastnet. That unknown better be a connection problem because I'm here with 10%. Let's see what's going on. That could be a bit more luxurious for a 60,000 60, euro vehicle. So let's show the Vattenfall badge that comes with the, with the vehicle. Let's plug it in. So we started the day with just 14%. I didn't do any overnight charging on purpose because I want this battery to heat up today so that's why I started with nearly an empty battery uh, even though I plan to do a lot of miles today to visit all these fast chargers but when visiting fast chargers you want the energy to be low even though with the Ionic 5 you can charge when nearly full so this is still old software this ABB won't show any speed luckily at least the Ionic 5 shows the speed inside yeah that battery is really cold imagine this I just drove for maybe 10 minutes to get here from 14 to 10 percent and this is what you get 70 kilowatt startup speed Look at this brand new MG ZS EV. These lights, lights look pretty cool. So uh, yeah, one of the cheapest EVs in the Netherlands. The Leaf is also not very expensive. And the Leaf has been here for 20 minutes. Let's see what this Ionic does. A kilowatt hour in a minute. Is it ramping up or not? No, it is not. So one leaf is leaving and the next one is already coming in. That's how we roll in the Netherlands. So a couple minutes later, 72 kilowatt, which is obviously still very slow. Uh, we're already here for five minutes with just five kilowatt hours gained. So don't bring your Ionic 5 to a fast charger when the battery's cold and when it's cold outside. The spring got a lot less warm than it used to be. What is going on here? They, they better do some remodeling because look at what the Netherlands is so, uh, so muddy. What a mess. This station isn't even that old, a couple of years. So, nearly nine minutes, only 10 kilowatt hours. Oof, it's called battery charging that some people in the UK have been talking about on my Twitter feed so much. It is a big deal indeed when it's cold. It doesn't show the outside temperature. Let's see what happens when I power up the system. Ah, nine degrees there it is. En die krijg je ook nog. En die krijg. So, 18 minutes later, only 23 kilowatt hour. Oh, and uh, the Polestar goes to Shell, or what does it do? So, we are ramping up because the battery is getting warmer. That Polestar is leaving. So let's see, what does an MG add in 20 minutes, 14 kilowatt hours? Not even that big a deal, the difference, I mean. Let's stop the session.
shall recharge pretty interesting if you look at the prices of gas but they have only two chargers uh-huh and the Skoda is just leaving so kind so 35% in the battery did some more driving we already had one fast charging session I'm curious to see what will happen over here. So let's follow the guidelines. It's always nice to do things with one hand. It showed a Vattenfall badge. Payment accepted. There we go. What is the... Ooh, this leaf had some injuries. Oh, it's charged to 100% in... Ah, uh, in one hour and 22 minutes? It's been here for an hour already? That's an interesting way of fast charging. Let's see. It's nice because here we can see volts and amps on these tritium chargers. Sweet purchase by Shell Recharge. So we ended the last session around 100 kilowatt speed. But now we're starting a new session and we drove a bit more. So the battery temperature is only getting better. Let's see the prediction in the vehicle. Seventeen minutes to eighty percent. So what's cool to see is how far away the actual charging is going on because that's all the way over there. You have the Starbucks over here. And here are the chargers. Hello Tesla. So that's a pretty sweet distance if you think about the actual charging is going on all the way over there. I4 uh, ID4, I'm sorry. Aha, uh -huh. here we have the climb, so the battery is finally warm, 174 kilowatt speed at 40%. Now this is a charging monster, welcome to the show at Shell Recharge. I wonder why the charging speed is dropping again, I really don't understand what's going on with the charging curve today, another Tesla over there. Uh, so we were just ramping up and it came crashing down again. These amps are only at 200. So yeah, we're gonna stop this because uh, we know enough for now. You can just end the session without showing any charging card. But I wonder if people could steal the plug of that leaf that has been here for more than an hour now. Does the counter still go up because it's still connected or not? No, so it could be even two hours already because the display is unchanged even though it has been here all the time I was here. This is Palm Pole or better known as the very first Fastnet station ever built in the Netherlands but also outside of the Netherlands and Total is now offering competition actually but not at the speed that the Ionic 5 wants because Total just offers 175 kilowatts and we know that the Ionic 5 if you bring it to the Alpitronic Hypercharger, like here. So with 40% in the battery of the Ionic 5, that should be just enough to make it to the Avia Camp Power location in Enschede, 
where I want to try the vi 500 volt charging today. Uh, but of course, why not check out this Alpitronic when we're on the way here at Fastnet. So one thing that you can say about the Alpitronics is that the, this display is on the one side, which obviously for new people who come in and charge here for the first time they might think like what is going on where do I where do I start this machine and then and there's no help because if you just don't realize that it's going on on this side there's no indication whatsoever not one arrow um, so Electra in France actually did something here they put this sign in French écran to the left side which means screen and uh, yeah I think those kind of small nudges they make sense because fast charging for most people is something they do a couple of times a year tops so yeah you can't expect everybody to know all these machines and so on and it even gets more funny because on this small model it's the other way around and the screen is on this side so yeah I don't know it's uh, it's a bit random I guess and yeah in a way that's fine but uh, for newbies a little bit of help please yeah so that flap could be more luxurious you know I've said it before scanning the Vattenfall in charge so at least I put some numbers here ladder 7 so I'm gonna pick number 7 300 kilowatts and there's cable management here so they're not on the floor as you can see they don't touch the ground anymore which is pretty let's see the battery should be nice and warm after two sessions 20 minutes at fastnet on the abb and what was it maybe five minutes of the tritium charger at shell just now but what is this why why does the second 23 seconds and it stopped communication error huh okay because I didn't hold the plug. Ah, look at this. So the plug is too heavy. I have to. Uh, I have to hold it. Wow. Okay, let's plug it in first. These heavy cables. Yeah, the CCS um, statistics that and this cooled cables it's nice to have cooled cables so you can do 500 amp charging but yeah these sockets they need to be a perfect fit now the cable hmm even though I hurt a lock it can still move strange But it does ramp up. Ooh, a Cupra coming in for a nice fast charging session. Let's see. It ramped up to 170 something at Shell, but then it went back down again. Unfortunately, Fastnet removed volts and amp statistics those can be shown over here but they edited the software to not show it unfortunately and to get the full screen you now have to show your your badge I guess it's nice so that nobody can mess with your session but yeah I don't really believe in that messing around even though obviously people can push the wrong button because there's no there's no confirmation so you press stop and it's 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 gone. Ooh, look at this Model S. Is it coming to charge at Fastnet? No, it's not. 
and the cupra is also not plugged in yet so apparently even the third charging session of the day even though they were short the battery is still not nice and cooking today <laughs> because we're only getting 140 kilowatts now. Time to go. So meanwhile, we arrived at Tol Negen, which on the south side is a station without any facilities except for the very latest of ionity charging in the Netherlands on the other side I don't think well I can show you you can see the Fastnet roof and behind Fastnet which was built last year uh, ionity had the Tolnege Nord station just two chargers of the old design for a very long time actually and uh, well it looks like this one could open soon so uh, yeah I wonder when they are not powered on yet but yeah they they look like they could be any day now I'm ready 350 kilowatt charging coming in and cheap if you ride the Yonic 5 Yeah.